In this video, I install a sync box so that you can get light behind the TV that follows your movie. Hi, welcome to my living room. I have been sent one of these, which is a HDMI sync box and lighting kit. Uh, it's been sent to me by Light Me. Link is below. Um, these are meant to light your TV from the back. Yeah, I didn't quite understand it. So the, apparently this concept has been out for a while. There's many brands of it. There's Philips, there's Govee, and now there's Light Me, and there's a bunch of others. And the idea is that you put an LED strip on the back of your TV, and then there's a little box that synchronizes uh, what's on the screen of the TV with the light behind it, so that you get this ambient light that matches what's on the screen. Uh, and that's kind of a neat idea, I think. I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not, but that's what we're gonna find out today. So, first of all, as well, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. No, seriously, if you do have questions or ideas or whatever, put them down below in the comments. Uh, I tend to reply to every single comment because I like the interaction. That's why I do these videos. So, this is called the Neo Light Kit, and it's meant for TVs. And I'm not sure what's in the box, because it's still wrapped. Um, but let's see what it does and look at how this um, works with the components that are in here, I think. But yeah, all right. All right, let's have a look at what we actually get to play with, because um, I'm not entirely sure what we need to do. Well, there we go. So. We have, I'm hoping there's an LED strip in here, obviously. Oh, it's well packaged. Talk amongst yourselves. All right. User manual, of course. Yeah, so here's a quite a chunky HDMI cable. So that will probably go into the TV, I'm guessing. There's a power supply. Here's the actual sync box. So that's the one I'm assuming that does all the smarts and turns the lights on and off. So the signal from the TV goes into this and then, oh yeah. So there are two HDMI input and output. And there's a side LED strip and a bottom LED strip. Okay, so there's two LED strips I'm assuming, right? And then power of course. So this is what does the magic, the sync box, all right. And then we have two rolls of LEDs and some mounting gear, mounting strips. Ah, oh, these are the corners for the TV for the back so that they can go properly around the corner. And then there's two, feels kind of, feels chunky. Like not the spool, that's just thin plastic, but the actual cables feel quite heavy duty, if I'm honest. This is better than I expected. There you go. And there's two of those, so I'm assuming based on what this says, one's for the side and one's for the bottom, I mean top and side, bottom and side, something. I think it does a half each. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, and what else have we got? Just power supply. So I will have to supply another HDMI cable. So let's just see what the manual says. How does this actually work? How do I set it up? We have two fixing brackets. Uh, yeah, it's quite nicely laid out, the manual actually works. This looks really quite simple. You can even cut the LEDs apparently at certain spots. Okay, ooh, that'll be interesting. Uh, these two USBs go into these two, obviously, that's the LEDs. And then you have an HDMI cable that goes into the TV and... Hang on, how does it know what the TV has? How does it know that my TV is... TV box and other HDMI devices. So I will have to... Okay, I'm not sure how that works. My brain's not working that well. Uh, there's an app for it. So apparently you can download an app, a controller via an app. TV projector and monitor screen goes in the output port and the input is PS4, Switch and other gaming devices, laptops, other HDMI devices. I think there's, a, I guess we're gonna find out. My brain's not working with this very well. Um, Cause there's two HDMI and I think you only need one to get the TV working and then you can have control through other devices maybe for the input. So yeah, um, I guess next is to install it on that TV behind me. Yeah. 
All right, so I just had a look at what I need to do to install it and put the LED strip on the back. And I'm gonna try and do it while the TV's on the wall. It's obviously a lot easier to take it off the wall, but then there's a whole lot of cables and stuff that I have to disconnect. So I'm gonna try with it on the wall, see if that's possible and go from there. Yeah. All right, LED strips are on. Um, I've attached an HDMI cable as well that we're gonna need. Um, kind of okay doing it on the wall with the TV, bit tricky. Um, it's certainly beat taking it off the wall, but if you have the TV off the wall, then do that. Anyway, let me just show you how the bracket sits on this TV. Um, Cause it wasn't as straightforward as the manual will lock you to. Over here, down here is a bracket, which is the holes these two cables that come out one from each LED, so they're sort of around. You can see this goes up here and it's a bit, oh, there's a kink. That's because this TV has a big round thing down here at the bottom and that's just the only way it can go. And then it has to go a bit in because up here, that bracket can't actually sit out here. So that makes it really tricky as well. So that's the best way I could put it. These brackets are very good though. They do hold everything in place. So that's really neat. And these LEDs are really chunky. Like it's really thick and it feels like it's not gonna come apart. So that's good. Um, the same underneath, you can see in here, maybe possibly, but I had to kind of just hang this. It's just sort of in the breeze because there's actually a gap here for all the cables to come in and out. So that's just how that is. And then on the other side, I'm gonna to have to cut these off somehow. Apparently you can just cut them and I'm not so keen on cutting this, but um, we'll get to that. See, there's a bit too much is about how much. So this is a 65 inch TV and this goes up to 70, I think. So it's a little bit too much and apparently you can just cut it off. So scissoring in a minute, but uh, yeah, so it's on. Um, now let's try and connect it to the sync box and install the app. All right, let's, um, Let's try and plug it in and see what actually happens. I'm still confused about how it works exactly because as far as I'm aware, you can only have one output on the HDMI on the TV at a time. It doesn't do output to two, but I think that's why this thing has an input as well. So I can put like my DVD player thing into the input if I want to have it showing from the DVD, I think, uh, or my PlayStation or my whatever gaming thing we have, right? So we're gonna put power to it. All right, the lights up, very good. And then we have the top, whoops, goes the Lego. Um, top or side is that one. And then the other USB goes into there. Oh, it's lighting up, flashy, flashy. And then we have the output of that here, like that. There was a flash from the LED, so something happened. Um, you can see here there's power, that is red. I'm assuming that's because it's not linked. I'm gonna try and use the app in a minute. And then there's Wi-Fi, which is flashing or wireless. I'm assuming it's Wi-Fi, who knows? Um, so I'm gonna try and hook up the app now and see if we can get some light in the LEDs. So I'm using Android here. So I'm just gonna install the Light Me app from the Android Play Store. Uh, and that's the, well, that's just the standard install app experience, right? So once you've installed it, open it up. 
like so and you want access to the device location now I think that is only because it needs to find your country and region so and it says you can enter your mobile number or your email address I couldn't get it to work with the mobile it just said nah can't do it so I used my email address I then put in a very long 32 character password which is what I normally do and then it says no it cannot be more than 20 and the app actually crashed at this point so I had to restart it but anyway put in a up to 20 character password there we go so it discovers the device that you need to add be aware that you have to be on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi not 5 gigahertz I actually had to walk outside my garden to get away from 5 gigahertz and then once that's um, added to your app then you need to add a family and that's just you know give it whatever you want to call it I'm just gonna call this Merlewood the name of the property and then we're gonna give it a room um, that we want to add to it as well so we want to have just a living room I think because that's the only place there is a light kit right now and then we can add the equipment so at this point I'm gonna add the equipment as a uh, lighting and again it just keeps discovering this I'm not sure why I did that anyway I'm going to put in my IoT network, install or, or sync up the uh, sync box, attach it to the Wi-Fi, and then we need to choose a living room. That wasn't entirely obvious that, that we need to place it in somewhere. So you're going to tap the living room or wherever room you have it in here. So please choose a room. And then we can click complete. So that's the experience. It's a little bit clunky. Um, it's not the most intuitive um, setup experience that I've come across. Uh, just in terms of pairing it and now we actually we gotta we gotta set up the light itself and make sure that it's calibrated so we access the light i'm not sure what it's doing here but i think it's just connecting to the light or something not sure and that gives us the setup experience um of well it says please complete the lamp setting so this is a light strip there's also light posts apparently from light me i haven't tried those but the light strip is then what we use and you can see here that the TV I got in the background it lights up so you can see that it matches so you got to choose which side your LEDs are on and then you can start playing with some of the uh, what's called taste the taste menu some of these are the things that you just use for setting up I don't think I'd ever use these kind of things but there's for example rainbow lighting it looks very pretty but you can see that the app is working with the sync box and there's fire um, that's kind of neat actually if you had a fire on the screen that might work well and then there's read now I would love to use this for automation but there's no way to automate this as far as I can tell with home assistant but that's for a future project I think uh, there's a star thing here then there's uh, I think it's particle which is lights again go around again I don't think you'd use this but it's kind of neat to play around with and then of course I wanted to sync it up with what was on the actual TV or on the screen and that's when I had a thought about how this works. Okay, Epiphany. I think I figured out how this works. Um, yeah, so this thing that I thought was going to put in, you know, um, signal and, and get lighting going from the TV. Yeah, TVs don't have HDMI, HDMI out generally, which means that's doing nothing. The way this actually works is that you need an input into that um, HDMI port here from something. So that's your DVD player or your PlayStation or your, uh, I don't know, Android TV box, whatever you have, Apple TV. And then this cable that goes in the TV then just passes that signal on and on the way it did, uh, sort of turns the lights into whatever's on the screen. So that's how it works. That's how it syncs it. So in other words, you can't use this just with the TV. Yeah. Anyway, I went through the whole setup process. You saw that before. And um, it's now all set up. And, and the light works, as you saw. There's pretty lights, everything. But to sync it, I now have to put something into here. So I'm going to use that, my DVD player, put that into here, and then put the signal into the TV. And then at least I can play a DVD that shows lighting and stuff like that. Yeah, so, um, hmm, figure it out. You can't use it with just a TV because they don't have HDMI out, generally. Um, so you need something else to put it into. So I just, um, I just learned. It took me forever for my brain to work that one out. There we go. All right, that's installed. It really, really is. Um, didn't take me all afternoon at all. Nope. Um, so, number one lesson, you can't use this with a TV. Um, you just can't. You have to have something in between 
displays it on the TV because otherwise there's nothing that the thing can pick up and create lights from any syncing thing. But let me just show you first here. So I can now, I've synced it with the app as you saw. So I can turn it on and I can do like fire stuff. These are just all preset things. The ones that you would never ever use after the first time. But it gives you an idea of, there's a ball jumping, I don't know. Things of, you know, lights that work, fireworks, whee! But much more interesting is that if I turn on the TV, the signal is now coming through this Sony uh, DVD player here, which is a smart player. So it's got YouTube app, that's me. Um, and if I just get the remote here, yeah. <clears throat> if I now play this, I think, or was it? There we go. Um, you can see it's still not doing anything because I haven't set it on video. So if I now go to video and I push on the screen, this button here that says screen in the app, hey, suddenly it syncs up and it works with that. Look at that. And it's super accurate. It really does work really, really well. So uh, I got to say the app, the setup experience, meh, bit average. Um, it locked. Well, I tried using a too long password and then I had to restart the app because I couldn't go back and choose a I put in a shorter password. Little things like that was a bit uh, annoying, but it works. It works really well. Um, so yeah, you can't use it with just a TV because I thought you could. Maybe I'm an idiot, but I don't know. You can't. You need something in between. So um, like, comment, subscribe. See, get there. Now seriously, comment on the video if you have another way that I can just hook up the TV. Because right now I have Plex going, Plex going through the Android TV. And it doesn't work because I don't have any way of getting the TV signal through the box, right? I don't have a HDMI out to the box to go back into the TV. How do I do that? I don't think you can. Um, so that's a bit annoying. That's kind of why I wanted to put it on this particular TV, but it does work well for what it's designed for, I assume, which is this through a, a, another device. I'm, it's really good. I'm quite happy with it. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. And um, hopefully, You've got something out of this setup. Um, if you're interested in buying one, there's a link below. Um, if you have other questions, put them in the comments. Thank you, bye. In this video, I'm gonna install this sink box light thing behind the TV to make it better and stuff. That's rubbish. <laughs> in this video, Jordan stands behind the camera. Oh. Like and subscribe.